Welcome to the voice of St. Anthony Parish from Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WROL, 9.50 a.m., 100.3 FM. And you can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com, where we are here every single Monday through Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, here at WROL. Also, you can hear us at WROLradio.com. And then at 3.16 in the afternoon, it drops on our podcast platforms, and you can find all of them at catholicaudiomedia.com. Some of them also include like Amazon, Google, uh, the iHeart, and all these other platforms. You can find uh, a bunch of them, not a not a, an exhaustive list, but a bunch of them over at catholicaudiomedia.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our Substack newsletter, which you can find there, and uh, some of the other things we have over there. So check that out catholicaudiomedia.com. Well, we're continuing more our discussion with Leonard J. DiLorenzo. He's the author of Our Faithful Departed, Where They Are and Why It Matters from Ave Maria Press. He's a professor at theology, of theology at University of Notre Dame, and he wrote this as part of what is known as the Engaging Catholicism series. So it's a whole series uh, published by out of the University of Notre Dame. In case you did not know, Ave Maria Press is part of Notre Dame University. So let's go to the second part of our conversation with Leonard J. DiLorenzo talking about his book, Our Faithful Departed, Where They Are and Why It Matters. Wow. Now, we... I was looking at your book. We're going to talk about your book, Engaging. Is Great. Engaging Catholicism is a series, right? It is. And right, that's that's not the name of the book. That's right, no, 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 I, I understand right, that. Right, right. Yep, um, right. so this is a series. So this is the book you've written in the series, the, the and Our Faithful Departed, and I, I, I read it. I loved it because, first of all, it's it's not normally a subject that you read in, in spiritual reading uh, about death, but it's you come from a whole different perspective of understanding death, which... Which makes sense at this point, after talking to you about different aspects of the Bible, you have this different perspective. And I, I was just, I, I loved it. I, I, I read it for radio, which means I, I read it a little faster than I normally would, but I'm definitely sure. going back to read it again. And I guess one of the things I'm seeing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is death um, in itself just death in itself is more to, I think you use the term atomization, is more a separation, but Jesus calls us back to a unity. Would I be right? I think part of what I'm trying to display is that our modern approaches to death mm-hmm. sort of clinch the ways in which we have approached life in the modern world, With it, which is that there's a whole series a whole regimen of ways in which we perform these separations from one another, Mm -hmm. these isolations from community. It happens in the way in which we work and the way in which we relate in our philosophical um, predispositions, etc. This is not the way I speak in the book for this. Right. By the no, way, no it's not. I mean, but, and, right. and it's a wonderful way you speak in the book. It's really, right. Thank it, you. it's a style, yes. Right. But death... Uh, lays that all bare, the Mm -hmm. event of death. And I think our approaches to death and dying in the modern world show this sort of approach that we've taken on to life in general, this really fallacy, this fault that we imagine ourselves as first individuals and only later or thereafter, potentially, maybe, in relation with one another. Mm -hmm. Well, death is the absolute end of a human life. It is a real end, Mm -hmm. and it is the real end. And our approaches to death and dying in the modern world show the ways in which we try to move past death far too quickly, that we've taken death out of the regular rhythms and movements of what we consider ordinary life. And the reality of Christian hope is never going to be the hope that ignores loss. Christian hope always and only reckons with loss directly. Mm -hmm. It's the hope, the life that comes from death, out of death, not from death, but out of death. And so I suppose the, the approach of the book is to proclaim the need for a renewal of a culture of communion 
with the approaches to death and dying as the really critical point of trying to do that, that are more in keeping with the promises of Christ, the communion of Christ, what true life is, and sort of show the lie of our modern approaches, which pronounce us really as individual, separate, isolated, atomized, as you said, Mm -hmm. first of all. Yeah. That was a very long way to try and answer that. I probably could have done it more direct. No, no, that was great. That, that's that, how I copy it this time. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. And and you, but but like I said, you you really have this new approach to obviously an ancient subject because death has been with us all along. But uh, and and that's what I loved about the book. Um, and uh, you know, I I was reminded when you were talking about this is uh, one time I had to go do an anointing. I was with a um, someone mm. who was helping me out from Brazil, spoke English perfectly, mm. but from Brazil, mm. and they have a different style of dealing with death and burial and and everything else. As a matter of fact, they bury the person the next day, no matter what. Mm. And mm. I got to the hospital, and of course the the person had died. So the nurse told me, "I'm sorry, Father, he is expired." And we get back to the car, the Brazilian looked at me and said, expired? Where did you get the word expired? <laughs> and he just, and I said, you know, and it was just so hinted at just the way us Americans look at this, because yeah. it is, it's something we don't want to talk about. So yeah, and, and all that. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think part of the approach, you know, that I'm trying to take is I've come to recognize, and I got, I you know, did a lot of different interviews as part of this book and just, a, you know, a couple decades of reflection on the uh, the reality and the approach of death that we get a lot in the Christian tradition of the call of memento mori, remember you are to die, right? And the practice of uh, confronting our own death, inevitable death at some point. But it struck me that the thing that really disorients people, all of us, that that comes upon us unawares and disturbs us is not so much our own death, though that is disturbing, of course, but it's the death of another. It's the death of the loved one. And it is the confrontation, therefore, with the absolute interruption of death. Just yesterday, I was at a funeral of a neighbor, um, not an old man, but his grandchildren, eight, eight grandchildren, he died of natural causes very suddenly. Um, There is this absolute interruption for that family, for his grandchildren. Grandpa was there last week and is not there now. Mm. And it is that encounter with the death of the other that, um, well, at least in Catholic liturgy, oftentimes we say life has changed, not ended. Perhaps we need that for the one who has died, but we also mean it and pray it for those who remain. For us, Life has not ended, but it is changed. The relationship with the dead is not the same as it was when they were living next door to us, as his grandfather was living next door to his grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Um, And yet, in Christ, that relationship or the longing, the prayer, the sacrifice does not cease. It's meant to call us forward into a new way of relating unto our heavenly reunion. Mm. Wow that and and I you know as you're telling d- discussing that I was thinking that in light of my own experience with my mother and my father have died and mm. um my mother died more slowly uh uh eventually suffering from a, a a stroke but my father died suddenly even though we knew it was going to happen it literally was he was fine one minute and then he was gone and wow. that was a very jarring experience back in 1985. And I think it took me years for me to even come to a point where I could approach it again. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just what you're saying, that has it's that jarring that everything has changed. And in this case, in, in an instant. And of course, mm-hmm. I deal with this qu- quite often as, as a priest. We'll be right back right after this. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452, 617-297-7452. 
I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. And don't forget our own website, CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. By the way, if you're looking for the website of the parish, you can find it either through there or we're at we're St. Anthony and Alston. So St. S-T, St. Anthony Alston.org. That's fairly easy to remember, St. Anthony Alston.org. We've been seeing more people coming to Mass, especially at the 10 o'clock AM Mass. So that's really good. And, um, and more people... I I don't know if it's the radio show that's pulling him in, but we're starting to see more people come to Mass, and that means a lot to us. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about St. Thomas and Emmaus, among other things. Let's uh, hear a quick clip of what you're going to hear tomorrow. And I think, you know, I love the way you're talking about that, the angry Thomas. Like, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And maybe those two wanderers are themselves angry. They're dejected. Their mm. expectations have been broken. And the Lord does not invalidate those. He goes right into the midst of them and creates new life there. That's tomorrow when we're going to hear more of our interview with Leonard J. DiLorenzo about his book, Our Faithful Departed, Where They Are and Why It Matters, from Ave Maria Press, coming out of the University of Notre Dame. In the meantime, we will talk to you tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the afternoon at WROL, and then after that at CatholicAudioMedia.com and your favorite podcast platform, have a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.